this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you've arrived at day 82 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Thank you so much for being with me on this ride. We are almost through, and I am so glad to get to draw with you guys today. Okay, today's tangle is going to be Buen Camino. That is a Spanish phrase meaning good way, and that comes from a uh, pilgrimage, I believe, uh, that Tina wrote uh, about in her Tangle Patterns article. So uh, you might want to go to tanglepatterns.com and check the article out and definitely check out the step out. Okay, so uh, according, this is Buen Camino. It is by, by the way, it is by Tina Hunsicker, CZT. And she has a lot of very cool patterns, not uh, the least of which is African artist, which is very popular. Okay, so this is Buen Camino. In essence, it is very similar to the tangle we did Walk the Line back on day like 50 or something like that. And so it is drawn within a structure with wavy lines. And then we just add line work on the inside to finish it out. Okay, this is another version of how you can embellish this. And there are tons and tons of cool ideas on uh, Tina's art. Okay, so let's step this out. There are a couple of ways to draw this. Let's see. Oh, looky there. And I'm going to show you both of them. Oops. Okay. So, in Tina's step out, she starts with a small orb. Okay. And then she connects to that this wavy line that comes back and connects down at the bottom, okay? I think I only got four humps in there and she usually puts five, but uh, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So then you're gonna travel along and follow these humps that you've put in and draw your petal shapes, and you want to encourage the little gaps between them. Those are good, those are okay, we want those. And I find this easier to go to the outer edge and draw my line up and around, and then that gives me a little more control of the between element, but of course, you may do it any way you wish. like this, okay? Then you can choose to either do the petal line work or the inner line work first, it doesn't matter. I'm going to choose to do the inner um, line work, which is just to put straight, and I emphasize straight, hatch marks. Well, Cindy, <laughs> straight-ish. All the way down into these gaps, just to fill them up and give some texture to this part that looks like it goes behind. Okay. And sh be sure you shift your tile. But you want these to go pretty much straight across. And the reason these want to be you want these to be straight is because we're going to put curved lines in here on the petals part. And uh, we want the contrast between the curved and the straight because that's going to uh, pop the petals out and sort of make this 3D, which is a very cool effect. All right. Got a little crazy there. And they don't have to be perfect, so don't panic if something goes wrong. All right, so now what you want to do, and of course you don't have to, but the in the pattern, uh, it has curved C shapes. And what I like to do to fill these petals up, and what I like to do is start at the bottom so that I can get the curve of this orb right here. And then I'm going to match that orb curve all the way up. 
and trying really hard not to switch my pen stroke up, i.e. if I'm going to pull down, pull down on them all, or if I'm going to push out, push out on them all, but choose one and don't switch in between. I find that when I do this switching, it causes the angle on the lines to switch, and like I always tell you guys, you want to try to make the same stroke in the same position all the time, if it's possible. So again, I'm going to match this to the orb shape right here. And I just made these down, so I need to continue to make them down, even though right now I want badly to push up. But I'm gonna to continue to do what I started with. And I am just going for line consistency all the way down. And here I've done a fairly good job which is usually not the case. Okay, I, this one doesn't really touch this orb, but I'm going to try to, actually, I'm gonna start right now pushing out. For some reason, as these get larger, I am more comfortable with the outward motion, and when they're small, it doesn't seem to matter so much that, I push in, that I'm uh, pulling in. But you guys, of course, you know your hands, and once you have tried these several different ways a few times, uh, you will find the way that works best for you. Keep drawing, keep practicing. If something doesn't turn out right the first time, don't let that stop you. Try it again, try it again and again. That is part of the fun, because that is when you, you start to understand a pattern right okay so this is the way that the pattern is drawn in the step out and she may or may not black this orb um i can't remember oh there is one more thing <clears throat> at the very end then she draws this little side sort of a wing thing sort of like this and that has lines that radiate out from there and that's a nice finishing touch for the edge there and so i'm i like that i'm gonna do that on both sides simba says hi karma he says pinchers rock. all right simba that's enough buddy okay so this is the completed pattern buen camino Okay, now, haha. -ha. Let's do uh, the method that Linda Farmer suggested and see if that might work for you. Uh, there's a little bit more control over the petals in this form, um, but the overall shape maybe not so much. So let's try it out and see. This also starts with the small orb. Okay, then I'm going to start with the middle petal. make it keep it nice and thin down at the bottom now I'm supposed to be getting smaller but I didn't do that let's try this and maybe one more and really be really be punching it in let's put one more over here yeah, that'll work better. Okay, so what we want to do now to get the rest of this is we're going to draw a curved line all the way around this. So it's going to look funky from these little ones to the big ones, but it's going to work here. So take off from the little one down here and land on the top of this one, okay? And then we're going to curve in and land on the top, okay? Curve in, land on the top, curve in, land, and there you have it, okay? And then the fill is going to be identical, or you can try this variation that, that was also in the step out. And this is fairly easy, you guys can probably figure it out, but let me show you quickly how this is done, okay? Basically, 
you're going to put a, a print on a spiral somewhere in the middle of this and you can do it close to the bottom you can do it close to the top try it a few different ways see what you like in her example she has it sort of in the center of the petal and then she just draws her spiral until she runs out of room and then she's adding these aura lines up to the top then on the bottom she's dividing this this space into thirds so sort of a skinny space over here and a skinny space over here and then she has blacked these and you could uh, put lines um, up there or uh, you know do something different this is this part is all intuitive it's entirely up to you how you want to do it what you what look you are going for this is more um, this is more an organic type of a thing and this is more you know more formally more decorated adding in auras and dividing my line and inking okay couple more So this is a really cute little fill. Now, in between this, we are going to again put our straight lines. Which, of course, is going to pop these petal, these decorated petals forward into the foreground. Okay. And drop this blank space into the background. Sam, what you got there? Won't brother play with you? Go ask him nicely. Loading. You move too fast. Da, 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 da. Okay. So these are the two versions that uh, are in the step out. And if you would like, you can go to Tangle Patterns, check out the artwork, and see some additional things that you might want to try with this. And let me know in comments which of these versions you found easier to draw. Uh, oh, I forgot to put in the little. Uh, wing shape on here you know and you can stripe that line however you want to yeah 
So that really does finish it off nicely. Okay, so let's start our tile. Okay, so in the step out art, um, she had a really large version of this that pretty much covered the entire tile. And within each one of these um, sort of uh, petal shapes, then she did some seriously cool tangling. And uh, so I really kind of think I would like to try that because I'm using a gray toned tile, then, um, then I think I can have a lot of fun with the highlights and shading on this. So what I'm gonna do is start with a fairly large orb in the corner of, of one of these corners of my tile. And when I say fairly large, I mean pretty large. So my intention is to fill the entire tile with this tangle, okay? With one element of it. Um, okay, so which version to use? If I use Tina's version where you draw the outer section first, which is probably what I want to do, then I want to have some control or more control of how many uh, bumps I have in here to fill in with petals. So I would want like one large one here in the center and then one on each side and then we could probably fit at least one more in on either side. So that would be a total of five. Okay, so I think what I will do is I will draw my hump right here for the center one and then figure out the rest as I go. <laughs> this will be interesting. So I'm going to start right on the edge of my orb. And uh, I've got two bumps in here. So not perfect, but uh, this will work okay. I can smooth out those lines where that doesn't show, so it's gonna be all right. So first I'm gonna draw my center petal in and I'm going to really try to make it a nice big one so I have lots of room for embellishing. So it'll come around here. Probably made that too thick most definitely did. We're going to try this. Right here. And I'm going to come around. This will be my outer line. We'll come right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna start, whoops, I'm gonna start with this hump. And I'm gonna bring it in right here so that I have a little separation, but not much. And then we're gonna do this one and I'm gonna make this kind of large since I've got a little extra room here. And then join that up, okay? So I've actually left fairly small areas between, but I've left myself some a large area in which to play, okay? So now the question is, while I'm thinking about what I wanna do in the middle, and I have a very good idea of what I would like to do, um, I'm going to go ahead and draw in my straight lines in between. And I'm just having a thought that I wonder how it would look if I curved these in the opposite direction of these. I think I don't wanna experiment with that here, although I'm very, very, very tempted, but <laughs> I'm afraid. I won't lie, I'm afraid. I 
Well, consistency of line is what we want. And when I say those things, I am preaching to myself and just saying them out loud. And if they happen to apply to you, awesome. If not, then you may ignore them. I find that a lot of people tend to have the same issues and some people have different issues, but you tend to have the same types of issues just depending on, on the type of artist you are. That's okay. It's just a matter of finding out what works best for you. Well, I will never tell you what to do. <laughs> I will only tell you what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. To try to do a little bit of line repair. It is another hot day in Oklahoma. I am curious how my people in Melbourne, Australia are doing. Shout out to you guys. Is it a uh, winter there since it's summer here? If it's cooler over there, I'm ready to travel. What'd you say, Cindy? Baby, I'm doing a video. I've been talking for 20 minutes. I'm going to answer one of your uh, questions. Which is? The one that you just asked right now. Why don't you answer it? The one that you just asked right now. What? About is it winter in Australia? Yeah. Is it? No. They're on the other side of the world from us. It would be normal for their winter to be our summer. Nope. Really? Is that information yeah. that you, you know or have you looked it up? I looked it up. Really? Okay, people in Melbourne, Australia, my child who is 10 going on 45 and thinks he knows everything, you tell me, is it winter in Australia or is it summer or what time of year is it over there? It's not oh, winter in Australia. No? It's winter in Japan. It's winter in Japan, huh? Okay, my people in Japan, is it winter in Japan? Yep. Hmm. My son likes to do something we call, well, I can't say that on the air. <laughs> what? He likes to make up information and present it as, as a, a researched fact. When he doesn't really know, he's just talking. But he could prove me wrong if he looked it up. All right, see there? Learning to do research because your phone died because you played on it too long, huh? Oh, it is, huh? Why can't you look it up then? Because I'm in the round. Oh, the all-important round. Yup. Yup. Those of you with teenagers addicted to, to gaming platforms like Xbox or PS whatever and all the rest, God love us all. We'll be in our graves and they'll still be playing the same freaking round. Yep. Okay, more of these. So what I've decided I want to do in here is do the tangle uh, Liu Liu Da Shan that we did earlier this year. We did it for Linda Farmer at Tangle Patterns uh, 10th anniversary. But I can't remember what day it is. I'll put a link to that video up in the this corn in this corner over here. <laughs> as soon as I get these hatched lines in. These deckled hatched lines. I've got the wiggles going on seriously today. Luckily, they do not bother me as much as they did this time last year, thanks to you guys and your positive comments and feedback. So I want to encourage you guys to keep those coming. I, um, I love seeing what you think and how you feel and all of those things telling me what's going on where you are. I saw, um, I saw that Canada was slowly uh, starting to open back up, but of course, we're all expecting uh, second waves. And uh, we went out to a restaurant to eat last night, me and the boys. 
and had a really good time, ran into an old friend that was lovely. And, uh, but that was our first time in a restaurant since this whole thing began. So um, it's, it's different, <laughs> it's different. Okay, I am going to take a quick pause, look up that tangle, make sure I know what I'm doing before I get started and I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, let's figure this out. It's going to be entertaining, no doubt. <clears throat> So this tangle is the one with the sixes, as I quickly remembered, where you have to do your sixes in an open way and not curl them around. So uh, let me show you if you're going to do this tangle again, you might want to look at the other video. Um, I don't know if I did that well enough that this probably would have been okay like this. Then you are a... Ara. Ara. And you are over here, the other direction. Like so. And you've got this sort of folded, cool looking orb thing. And then for the next one, you start right in the middle. I'm not used to drawing these quite so large. So, Ara. Breathing, taking my time, and turning. And Ara-ing the orb. All right, so let's do another one, which will be even bigger. And these are definitely not round, but I think since we are doing a, a shape that is getting larger, I think that's fine. I think it will be still be interesting to look at. We can still round the orb with shading. We need to adjust that a bit. We can. I don't know why I'm so attracted to this pattern. I love the folded look. I loved it when we did it. It was not very popular, but I really like this tangle. You guys are crazy about flowers and hearts, which nothing wrong with that. Okay, now let's see if we can fit enough of another one in. To make this work. Remember, you just want to make your auras go opposite directions. Well, I like the way this is going to turn out at the top, I think. Very cool. I really like that. Now, one thing I'm definitely going to want to do here is redefine this line. And that is because my curves here are not as pronounced. Well, maybe they could be, but I feel like I'm not getting enough of a difference between this hatch stuff in the background, what I'm doing here. So uh, uh, I think I'll really work to keep these rounded as much as possible. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's do another one. Or I could do something different on each one of these petals. Let's think about that for a second. Let's try this at least two more times. See how it goes with these skinny little pieces down here. 
So I'm going to start with my six and my auras, such as they are. Then midpoint approximately, put my next one in and my auras. Yeah, so this is going to be cool, I think. Let me know in comments which one of the fills you're going to use. I'm curious to see what, what interested you guys and what did not. Actually, I had no idea I was going to do this fill until I was drawing in the petal and thought, oh, you know what would look really good here? Listen to your instincts when you have those thoughts and go with them. That's always a good deal. And again, they don't always turn out perfect or right at all. But at least you have learned something from the experiment. It's sort of it's sort of like the scientific method, you know. You get your hypothesis, which is your idea. You test it to see if it's valid, which was your drawing. And then you decide whether it's a valid hypothesis or not by the results that you get. So, ooh. I just got all scientific. Are you guys impressed? Yeah, I'm not really that impressed either. But there is a correlation, I'm just saying. Well, now, that was kind of disappointing. But we're going to keep going anyway because the patterns work. We have to trust the patterns to do their thing. And while sometimes the results aren't what we want, that doesn't mean that the pattern failed us. All right, let's put our last one in up here. Okay, and like that. Shading is going to do a whole lot for this. This is a lot of lines, so we're gonna we're gonna find out if this was a good idea or not. And no matter how bad it is, once I shade these orbs up and use my white charcoal pencil on them, they're gonna look amazing. I hope. There's always that caveat, isn't there? All right, let's get some more in. We'll just leave that one. Like this. Hmm, this is going to be interesting having them rubbed together this way. This will be a very interesting experiment to see how this turns out. I know it's fine up here, but where these are touching each other, that's, that's, um, that's an interesting mix there. We'll see. See how it goes. And again, these little orbs and these sixes don't have to be perfect. They can be a little off or wonky. Just try it out and see what you come up with. Okay. 
Okay. So now, do I want to go ahead and finish it up? Or do I want to do something different over here? Let's finish it up. Let's not, let's not put too much thinking in it. Let's focus on relaxing. Drawing in our sixes. So the ends of that weren't so clean, but let's play with some shading here and see what happens. This is gonna be fun, I have a feeling. And I'm very tempted right now to shade with my Tombow 00 and do all the shading just by lifting pigment from the ink here, except for inside the orbs i'll be doing that that differently but um i'm wondering if i just run this there we go along this ink down the middle get this just a little bit dark
And I'm gonna go ahead and let this be fairly dark because I've got lines going in different directions up here. Uh, I'm going to want the background to be uh, the background and not vying for ah. attention. All right, let's get this section done. And then we will mess with the shading on the tops of these petals. Okay. Remember, I have not put any shading, any ink color at all. I am just using this Tombow N00 marker blender on this. It's picking up the pigment from the ink that I'm using. And uh, so I'm not having to add any shading color at all. I'm just using this with the ink that is on here. So I'm gonna just really gently darken this right behind these orbs where these uh, two lines come uh, opposite each other. And that gives us a nice shade there. And then uh, probably should put some right here around the top. Like that. Then I might want to add some just right here on the edge. To sort of round this up a little bit. So once this dries off, I'm gonna bring my black Vareth in. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do here is let this dry off just a little bit so that I don't have uh, wet edges. And then I'm gonna switch to my black Varathin and I'm going to deepen uh, some of the shading uh, probably right along next to these petal shapes, make that a little deeper. And then I'm also going to come in 
uh, at the tops of these uh, on these orbs and I'm going to uh, put some color in there just to sort of orb it up a little bit more. I missed a spot over here, didn't I? So, I'm going to want to clean up some of the stray spots here. Let's see how this goes, see what we can do. Uh, but first, I want to grab my PN and I'll go around this outer edge again and sort of uh, deepen the line weight. Um, especially uh, work on the lines up and around here to even them out and make it and make them uh, nicer then we'll decide where we're going from there I don't know why he has to hide in my closet when they play hide and seek Mar <sighs> thank you Thank you for wearing the pup out. You're, you're like his favorite thing in the whole world. You know that, right? All right. So back with you. You had to have a little boy break. I'm just going to redefine this outer line. So when you're scrubbing over over your line work, it grays it out, it lightens it. And so uh, when you've got elements like these, it's always nice to uh, get some redefinition if you've got grayed out lines. Then everything is clear and crisp and clean. It's just what I like. Not saying you need to outline everything, mind you. But in this instance, yes. <laughs> and not everything, but just the outer element, the outer edges of these elements. Since the, the shading evened out the color between what I did in the back and what I did, um, what I did in the background and what I did on the sides here, then I'm going to need to do something to redefine uh, that difference between the back layer and the, and the next layer up, if, that, if you will. All right. It might have been too much redefining, but um, you need a little help there, so. Okay, let's come around here. Make this curve a little bit nicer. Okay. So this really does help sort of, although it's more like outlining with a great big marker in it. <laughs> it's not what I mean, but it does help, or at least it will, I hope.
Okay, so this is where I'm at, and I'm going to now grab my Vera Thin and uh, see if I can do some more shading on this, see if I can make these orbs uh, a little bit more 3D. Okay, well, I can't find my Vera Thin, which doesn't surprise me. It has gotten so small. And uh, I'm going to shift this and um, remind you guys that this is graying out the lines and the shading quite a bit. It's also making uh, the difference between the black and the gray more pronounced. At least I hope that's what it is. So what I'm going to do is come in with my pencil and I understand that this is going to shine uh, for you guys. But uh, if I use my Zentangle pencil, which is, has a pretty fairly high grade of graphite in it, And I just come in and make a gentle circle here. This is pretty loaded with graphite. And if I can just do a little crescent shape there, that's a lot. I'm gonna, I'm using way too much here. I, will, I can almost guarantee I'll be lifting that out with, with the mono zero. All right. Okay. And sometimes I, I really like the heavier graphite pencils because the graphite spreads so nicely and smoothly. But then, <laughs> that's why I use an F pencil now, guys. Because I make a very big mess with graphite. And I'm using the side of the tip here and trying not to get any hard lines on here, but just to get a little bit of the color. The other way you can do this, by the way, if you're too heavy handed with graphite, is you can load up a piece of paper, just like on a scratch piece, just rub graphite on there really heavily, and then you can dip your tortillon in that, rub your tortillon in that, and come over and very gently uh, add some shading like that that's very subtle. You don't get the dark uh, shading that you do when you apply it directly to the paper, but uh, it is another way of doing subtle, uh, more subtle shading. And remember, we're gonna blend all of this out, so even if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. And I'm going to go ahead and treat this as one of these orbs. And I have to have my teeny tiny tortillon for this work. Otherwise, I'm gonna have graphite everywhere. This is usually how it goes for me. Okay. So let's blend this just a little bit. And of course, I don't have my teeny tiny tortilla home. I have my great big paper stump. I'm gonna put some of this in anyway. And try to leave my little white sliver. Now what I'm gonna do is bring my white charcoal pencil in here to the top of this and drop in a highlight. Just real subtly like that. You'll be able to see it better. Okay, and then when I when I um, blend all this together here, that will help. All right. Okay. Way too much graphite here. So I'm definitely gonna have to come in with my eraser and lift this out. This is probably much better, close to what I want.
graphite in this way. We're just enhancing the rounded quality of these, sort of making them pop out. Instead of being flat uh, orbs, then they're, they're more uh, 3D um, pearls or perfs or something more like that. It definitely gives them a 3D quality. And although my rendition here isn't perfect, it still is fairly effective for this. When I go and add my white charcoal pencil when I'm finally finished and give this some finishing touches, I think you'll be surprised at, at how well it comes together. And if I decide that these are just too overwhelmed uh, as far as the shading by the background, I can always black the background in if I want to. It's just another option. Well, we're coming in for the home stretch, guys. Less than 20 days. Don't worry, I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be uploading several times a week. I have got some really fun projects uh, planned for you for us and I hope you guys are going to really enjoy them. I, my goal is usually to have you guys or to have us something that we can hang on our wall when we get done or something we can display because uh, I have too many tiles, beautiful tiles tucked away in boxes that nobody ever sees. And so I, I like to make things that we can put on the wall. So or uh, put on a table or something to decorate. And I've got two projects uh, set, set to go that are going to give us both of those. So we'll see what you guys think. All right. Now, uh, before I go further and add any white charcoal, I think I'm going to deepen my shading in a couple of places. I'm going to put more color down right here at the base and just really darken that. Again, with the knowledge that this is going to shine as it does. Yeah. Another option would be to use the water-based marker, but again, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to get to the point where it's too much. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So the goal here is to set these two sections apart between the background and the foreground. And so that's why I'm going ahead and adding a little bit more uh, color, rather heavy graphite layer. This is intentional in this at this point. All right. Okay. So now before I blend this, I'm going to go through here and right here in this crease, darken this and also above each of the orbs and see how we do with that. Okay. 
A couple more strokes, we'll blend it out and that'll be it for today. Except I'm out of control over here with the pencil. All right. All right, so let's blend this a little bit. Try not to make too big a mess. Seriously, let me find a smaller tortillon. Let's go. There's some spots I'm gonna have to lift this back out of. But I'm not going to blend it too hard because I want it to stay pretty much where it is. Tina has got an intricate, gorgeous Zia on her tangle, in the Tangle Patterns uh, article that she put with her Step Out art, uh, and it's just stunningly beautiful. You should check it out. All right. Let's see if I missed any spots. Hard to tell, it all looks pretty graphite y to me. Just looking for spots that need to be blended a little bit better. And those spots with extra pencil there, I'll lift out with the uh, Mono Zero eraser. For now, I'm going to stop and get my uh, Mono Zero. Oops, here's a spot I forgot to shake to uh, blend right down here. Okay, now let's use the Mono Zero over here on this one to lift out this extra. go through on the tops of these orbs and lift out any stray graphite I've got here so that when I put my white charcoal pencil on there it won't get muddy it will just get bright at least that's the goal at least that's my goal <laughs> If you're looking for muddy, white charcoal and graphite makes a nice muddy mix. There we go. So we have a clean surface to work on here. And of course, once we get the white charcoal on, we'll blend it again. So let's go. Let's pop in the white, pop in the magic. I 
And I'm just gonna apply this with small circles so there are not any harsh lines. I love using these. They're so smooth and easy to put on. And I'm gonna go in and swirl some around the top of each one of these orbs. Help it sort of brighten up and pop out. Yeah, that'll look good. There we go. Oh yeah, this will be fun. This looks like that Tangle Lolly Wimple, doesn't it? That's one we haven't tried. I need some Tangle suggestions, guys. I have trolled poor Tangle patterns really hard this year. I've tried to mix it up. You guys don't like the grid patterns, period. <laughs> You did like Batten. You seem to like the organic ones, but there are only so many organic patterns. So I've been grabbing the new ones as they come, but she's not putting them out fast enough for me. <laughs> We're about to get stuck with one of my patterns. And while I feel like uh, maybe for the last day or something, it might be fun to do that on black or something. I'm not sure it's what I want to do. So if you guys have tangle suggestions, now some of the ones I've gotten have been um, tangles that I don't feel are appropriate to the skill level of the general group, uh, i.e. a little bit too challenging. It's not that I mind the challenge and I know that you guys don't mind the challenge. I just think the challenges uh, need to be <laughs> put out in a certain way. So. Okay, let's see. Right here, this is the last one down here. Woohoo, boys, the last one. And we can talk and be silly. The last what? The last one to highlight. And then, you done? almost, almost, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rub in a little bit here and here on these larger ones because I'm not gonna have any room to do this on the smaller ones. So just on these few here in the center. Yeah, so any of them you feel like you can fit that on, it's probably going to make some pretty dynamic looking stuff. But when it gets really small, then you can't fit it in. So you just have to choose your battles Depending on how large you made these, you may not be able to fit it in at all. And that's okay. Remember, this is your art. You can do what you want. And I recommend that you do that. Anything you want to do, anything that makes you happy, you just do that. There's too little control and happiness in the world, so we might as well make ourselves happy when we draw. Too much in this world is out of our control. So we might as well control what comes out of our pen. Okay, let's shade this or blend it a little bit on some of these with the rougher edges. I don't wanna go over it too much, but I do want these to have a, a soft edge. and not be this crazy white circle in the middle of everything. It makes a huge difference, doesn't it? All right. Looking good. Um, on these, I may lift out some of this color that ended up around behind and add some more um, charcoal there. I think those are a little out of control, but 
overall, this is day 80. Holy cow, what day is it, guys? 82. 82. No, it's day 82. It just seems like it's day 83 because this took so long. <laughs> All right, guys, this is day 82 of the 100 Days of Zentangle, and this is Buen Camino. All right, I wish all of you, Buen Camino, good way or a, a, a smooth path, if you will. All right, guys, many blessings from Oklahoma. Hello from me and Mari and Caden and Simba. We love you all, and we're sending you lots of hugs from Oklahoma to wherever you are in the world. We'll see you tomorrow.